I'm a huge fan of history and love playing games that allow me to relive the past. Warfare themed titles are obviously a part of this, but I also have a great interest in exploring the aspects of everyday life and the under the hood mechanics of how society has functioned. I was therefore quite excited when Ubisoft reached out to recommend that I try out their game Anno 1800 and to sponsor this video where I could just talk about my impressions. So right off the bat, I have to admit that I've never played the 20 year old Anno series before, but have had some experience with similar types of city management games. Therefore, what you'll be seeing is my impression of the game from a fresh set of eyes. This can be useful for anyone else in my position thinking of trying the game, which is actually free from now until December 18th and up to 55% off for a full purchase. Check the description for more details. Alright, so now let's jump in. The game is set at the start of the Industrial Revolution in a time of industry, diplomacy, and discovery. These themes feature heavily in a game where you'll be spending your time creating huge cities, planning efficient logistics networks, settling new continents, sending out expeditions, and dealing with opponents through trade, diplomacy, or warfare. So from an overall impression, I can say that I really like it. The audio and the visuals are truly stunning and do a great job of making everything feel like a living, thriving city is unfolding before you without really a care about what your desires are. I spent a great deal of time just watching the animations of the hustle and bustle, and it's enough to make you just want to sit there and stare, which I guess is a good thing since early on I was mostly stumbling through my playthrough and had a lot of spare time as my production lines weren't that efficient. And admittedly for first timers, this is going to happen a lot, since such games generally have a pretty steep learning curve. NO 1800 has a ton of rich complexity as you bring your settlement from a backwater town to a thriving metropolis. Thankfully though, everything is quite intuitive and it's a lot more forgiving than other city management games I've played in the past. For first timers such as myself, there is also a handy campaign that walks you through the basics. Not everything is fully explained, but it's a nice, chill setting to incrementally get exposed to the game's full scope while in a cushioned environment. In the campaign, you play the role of a member of a powerful ruling family whose father has died. The evil uncle takes over and it's up to you to establish a new city from which to slowly build back up your own power before eventually returning home to make things right. I've been having a really good time so far. So now with all that said, let's go ahead and start a new game just to give you a sense of things. And the first thing you'll notice is, wow, this is absolutely beautiful. Lots of little details, flora and fauna all throughout. If you go in the ocean, there's going to be whales. Across the plains, there's going to be buffalo. Uh, in the forest and prairies, you'll have deer, all kinds of stuff going on. And looking around the terrain, you'll have all sorts of other things as well. Mineral deposits, resources that uh, you'll have to be mindful of as you expand your territory. But for now, all I've done is just cleared out this little area of land so I can just demolish that, make way for a new rising settlement. When it comes to construction, you're probably going to want to just start from here and build out your road to connect it. So what I'd like to do is just start off my territory with simple major highway that expands out, uh, makes it easy for people to, uh, to travel. And now that that's in place, you'll notice that this just costs money. You have a little bit in the bank and over time you'll find a balance between, you know, your upkeep and your cost to the income that you generate. But to get started, what you're going to want to do is going to be to build, well, a marketplace and some of the basic structures which we'll use to then tech up. One of the cool features of the game here is that in traditional, you know, um, resource management titles, it's you just place your structure and you rotate it. But what's cool is they actually have this blueprint mode on, which allows you to place a structure, but it's not actually built. So take a look at this. This is going to be our first uh, neighborhood. So you'll notice I've placed those all down, but because we're in blueprint mode, they're not completed. So this is one of those things about Anno that I really appreciate is the fact that they've made it very simple and easy. For instance, if I wanted to move this, I could just, there you go, move it. I can even do that when the building is constructed. So very, very simple and forgiving. Now what I can do is mass produce those and now they're all built. So what you saw me build right there is going to be our first neighborhood. So what does that entail? Well, now we have a bunch of just farmers. So clicking on these, you'll notice that each of these uh, farmer residences now comes with a single farmer. And what you're going to do basically is this is going to start to generate 
one of your types of population. Uh, the way the game works is you'll have your basic farmer, and then over time you can invest more in each of these dwellings, such that they might become then a worker, or later on an artisan, and you kind of keep upgrading your populations, each one of them being able to unlock and do different tasks for you, but the lower ones still have importance at all tiers of the game. So basically you're going to start with a big wide base and then slowly build your social pyramid. Uh, taking a look at each of these centers, basically the way it works is you'll see that they have their basic needs, uh, which for now is going to be access to a market. Without meeting these needs, they're not going to grow, which is going to stall out your game. So let's go ahead and give them uh, the thing that they need here. So I'm going to give them a marketplace and uh, yeah, let's put it uh, right here. We're still in blueprint mode, so let's build that. So now, going back to the house, you'll see that they now have access to the marketplace. And now that means that they're going to start to grow and prosper. So we're going to want to start chipping away at their other needs. Um, this is how it works for upgrading your population tiers. Is With each tier, you're going to need to make them meet their basic needs, get this bar all the way up to the top when the house is full, then you can upgrade it, it fits more people, and then they have more expanded needs. So for instance, they might need entertainment, or they might need to have a pub, or different things like that. So the needs are ever increasing. Uh, so yeah, that's basically how it works with population, and each of these dwellings as they get upgraded not only give you access to different types of populations, but also the dwelling in and of itself is going to be generating uh, more and more income. So for right now it's going to be zero, but as you increase it, it's going to be more income. The highest tier families are going to have the highest tier income. So that's how you can start to get more money. Another way is going to be through your market here, where for instance you can uh, you can buy and sell different goods. So it looks like here we're going to try and get some uh, of our early tech and that's going to be in the form of timber. So a lot of the times when you're building out these types of production uh, lines, it's going to have your raw resource, potentially multiple raw resources that then go into production chain. So for instance here, it's going to take two buildings. One of the things to keep in mind is the fact that uh, they're going to be producing at different time intervals. So for instance here, wood is going to be produced every 15 seconds, and then here, the sawmill is going to produce, well, timber from that wood every 15 seconds. So that means it's a one-to-one -one ratio. If, for instance, the sawmill took 30 seconds, what I would want to do is have two of those, such that the net total is that on average they produce uh, timber at 15 seconds, so that you have a one-to-one -one ratio. So those are the things you want to keep in mind. So let's go ahead and put down our lumberjack hut. Let's move it away from our population center and say that, uh, yeah, we're going to be having our lumber generated from over here. Let's produce two of those. Eldest, you outdo yourself. The farmers are hungry. You'll have to supply them with the necessary. There we go. We'll connect those back. And then along the way, actually, we might as well do this. And then what I'm thinking is uh, along the way, we'll go ahead and have our sawmill. And actually that did dig away at a little bit of their production because that's taking away some of the land. So like I said, the um, the ease with which this game allows you to fix your issues is going to be excellent. So there you go. I've done that. So now ready access to both of those. Let's go ahead and upgrade them. Show you how this works. So as you can see, these guys are going ahead and every 15 seconds they're going to be sending out some uh, raw wood, which is going to come out in this carriage, and then it is going to go into the next stage of production, so that's why I've located these nearby. It drops it off. This now is going to be able to have wood, so they have a little bit of storage. It's now been dropped off. Once that wood gets dropped off, then it can start the process of, uh, well, being turned into a final material. It takes a little bit to drop it off. And it actually looks like uh, they're going to need a marketplace to... Uh, or a warehouse, excuse me, to start to store their goods. So let's go ahead and put that down here. There you go. So he's going to start production. It looks like he's going to want a warehouse because uh, their uh, ability to store wood is going to be rather limited. So yes, these people can come and continuously dump stuff, but you're going to need a place where they can drop off their finished goods. Okay. Otherwise, these limited capacity... Uh, areas are going to overflow. So that's why you want to build uh, a warehouse. And warehouses, basically you'll want to build several of them around your area. 
So for instance, maybe another one here. And what's awesome is they share a general pool. So anything placed inside this warehouse, I believe can be offloaded in this warehouse. So that's, you know, these are gonna be your hubs of production that you place. Uh, so yeah, that's coming along. You can see now we're gonna be producing wood planks. These can then be used to continue to build, you know, residences, which are gonna have a construction cost of two wood or marketplaces or all that. In addition, what they can do is they can have carts that come from here and take it to the dock and go ahead and sell that. And what I'm going to do actually uh, is make this a bit easier to access. I'm not the most efficient at construction, but uh, yeah, there is something to be said about the aesthetics of this game. So let's see what these guys need. Missing goods. So it looks like they're going to want just more and more timber. We should have this balanced out. But uh, I guess it can't hurt to do uh, another one for our purposes. So let's go ahead and... Uh, where do you want to put this? No, I think for now they're just complaining. Yeah, that's fine. The balance is alright. So the next thing we're going to want to do if we go back to our villagers is going to be... Well, they have a little bit of fishing. But uh, we're going to want to make that something more sustainable. So let's go ahead and put our fishing dock there. We'll upgrade it. And I think what we're going to do actually is this is going to end up being kind of like our main dockyard area. So let's go ahead and just make a big road. And that's where we're going to be putting a lot of these uh, things as they uh, as they get added and built upon. So there you go. Now it's going to be starting to produce. Uh, once the fish comes in, and you can see fishermen here at the docks coming out. Uh, man, I love all the little details. And here you can see some of the planks that are, are coming in. Anyway, so once the fish are brought in then you're gonna have yep this little cart is gonna come over here it's gonna come i believe to the marketplace where it can be stocked and then this is where your villagers are gonna come and pick it up so you can start to see the interconnection of all of these things have to be thought out and this is where the gamification of all of this does take place where you have to be very careful if you want to be the most efficient so now fish is up so we're probably going to want to just uh continue to attract more farmers so let's go ahead and build another uh kind of sector now that we have enough uh, wood planks. There we go. And upgrade that. There we go. So our population is growing. And it looks like we have enough room here for another little uh, group. But I think this should be enough to meet our basic needs. Their fish are low. But because we have our fishermen going ahead and, and producing fish. Putting it in storage. Uh, some of that goes to the marketplace, which is slowly being drained. But uh, that's fine. We have enough replenishment now that uh, we're starting to get going. And what you'll see is once we get to the next tier, this will start to unlock the more advanced uh, equipment. So schnapps here and also work clothes. So let's go ahead and fast forward a little bit. A new milestone. There we go. So new milestone is awesome. Happiness has gone up and now we're a village so that's going to unlock the higher tiers and this is where it starts to get more interesting so again similar type of production chain here if i want to uh produce clothes this takes 30 seconds this takes 30 seconds so one to one so let's go ahead and have Outdo yourself. i think this is a good area actually let's go ahead and uh give ourselves maybe a little bit more space uh we'll put this in the back row And let's just build one for now. So sometimes you'll build the structure and then you'll have to put sheep folds. So let's go ahead and do something like that. And then what I'm thinking is the final production works. We'll go ahead and put it... Um, hmm, where do you want to put it? I want it, I want the production works to be all by the storage, but I still want them close to their area of production. So let's go ahead and just do that. I think that'll work nicely. So let's upgrade that and then let's go ahead and you know branch out from our main highway here make it so they can get over perfect so one to one there you go just comes in drops it off here and then when that's done it can drop it off in the central warehouse so we're going pretty good there starting to produce some clothes and I think what we'll do is we're gonna go ahead and again kind of double up on production yeah, we'll do that there. Oh, yeah, and see if I uh, screwed that up. Easy enough to fix. Let's go ahead and finish putting that down. 
finish off our road. And there I impacted a little bit of the, uh, the woodcutters, but uh, that's fine, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. And then here, let's go ahead and build another one of our little guys. Make the road around. So there you go, I'm doubling up on production, not necessarily something you need to do, but I'm getting us ready for the future. Now, as I'm building all this out, these are kind of low tier structures that are going to require uh, farmers. And so right now, I've built too much. And so, you know, we don't have enough farmers. So, I mean, simple. All we have to do is go ahead and come in here and let's go ahead and make a couple more of these blocks. Make everything symmetrical so we don't, uh, you know, upset our OCD. Have that there, and we should have enough planks of wood to, I believe, build at least a, a good amount of that. There we go. So this is going to start to fill up. We have most of our meads net, and yeah, now it's all a balancing act. So we had our fishery, which was there before. Now these people aren't very happy uh, because, well, they don't have enough clothes, but we had already kind of jumped the gun on that in terms of getting production up and running. So, you know, it's a balancing act. There's probably a lot of calculations you can do to see what's best. But overall, I'd say things are looking pretty good. Right next to the market, things are not bad. Uh, so, yeah, now we're starting to unlock more and more of our commodities. Another thing you could do is, for instance, have a fire station. There is the perhaps random chance that uh, a fire could break out, and you're going to want people to uh, attend to that. So let's go ahead and put our little fire station there located in the center so that he can adjust uh basically uh get access to everyone when a fire breaks out these guys can go ahead and uh, undergo uh firefighting duties not necessarily something you want to get right off the bat uh maybe you want to run the risk but uh, i'm just showing you around let's do some of our other structures so here a potato farm again we're going to stick to our idea of having kind of the raw production out here let's see what do they need need more loading bays So yeah, that's something that you can potentially upgrade if you have enough workers. Uh, all of these buildings can be upgraded. So let's go ahead and get back to here. And I'm going to go ahead and um, farm. Uh, potato farms do need a decent amount of land. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and put it, uh, let's put it out here. And let's just go with the, perhaps some depth. There we go. Get our potato farm up and running, and we'll put the Schnapps Distillery right around the corner. Oh, sorry, actually, fits uh, much better here. Let's do that. And remove that one. Finish up our road. So I actually like how this is coming out. We have our nice uh, all production facilities, raw materials going into the central warehouse. And yeah, these, uh, so that's another thing. Loading bays can start to get uh, overcrowded. Let's make sure people can get access and uh, the AI isn't getting too encumbered there, but eventually we'll be able to upgrade this uh, once we have workers. So speaking of workers, how do we do that? Well, we want these to be happy. And so now we're just about there. We're producing enough uh, to the point where I think pretty soon we'll be able to pop up to 10. There we go. So now... Check this out. We're at 10. Everything is met. Now I can go ahead and upgrade these. Boom. Age of industrialization. So now I have workers. And the way this works is now you can see a new pop has been added. I have my general workers, which has a labor pool of 247. And then I have my workforce, where everyone here, the 10 residents, are now all workers. And you can see now they have additional needs. And that's essentially the way this works. With those 10 workers running about, they can start to do things. So for instance here, going back, uh, I have the workers such that I can upgrade this, but now I need more materials to, to get at it. So I think things are going pretty well, and you want to keep the balance. You don't necessarily want to upgrade these right away, because you'll lose out on your farmers, and then all these buildings will shut down. So it's a very delicate act uh, that I really enjoy. Uh, and you can always downgrade. Again, Anno does a good job of making this very easy uh, to correct your mistakes uh, as needed. And now also these people are generating money for me. So money is negative right now. I have a good pool, but eventually as this grows and grows and grows, and we'll go ahead and let's just upgrade another one. You can see our, our money is going to get better and better. Farmers do produce some money, but uh, workers obviously are going to produce more money. Uh, so what else do we need? Let's go ahead and look at these guys. So they need a little bit of sausages. 
Let's uh, keep showing some of that. Ah, okay, so you can see these are all the farmer-specific structures. And now I can go over to the worker-specific structures. And eventually, as you go on, you know, your artisans and your engineers and whatever the other higher tiers are, they're going to have their own specific buildings, all with additional inputs. So it looks like they are going to want some sausage. So let's make a pig farm. Um, yeah, I guess this is a good place. Um, let's place our slaughterhouse... Keeping with our idea of having centralized production, we'll put those there. Blueprint mode being very easy to help me do the spacing. Uh, and then with the pigs, let's go ahead and put the pigs basically right next to them. And then now we can go ahead and plan out where we want our pig pens. Hmm. Didn't make the cleanest one, but let's go ahead and... Uh... Maybe we'll, uh, we'll move these over one. There we go. So back to him. There we go. And let's get back and let's fix my OCD. Ah, dang it. Alright. I think what we'll do is we'll just do that. Uh, which means that probably I think we can get away with this. Let's check this out. All right, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, perfect. All right. So we've got that built. Let's go ahead and upgrade all of these. Ah, promotion not possible. Looks like I'm jumping the gun on my production lines because I'm commentating on all this as we go. But things are starting to be set. I probably shouldn't be doubling up on production as I go along. Uh, okay, looks like we need uh, more farmers. Our wood is still good, so let's make uh, another neighborhood. Wrap this around. And there we go. So things are, are coming out well, and that's one of the things you want to notice is planning a little bit ahead, keeping things uh, centralized wherever possible. So for instance, I preemptively had put my market here in the middle with enough space on either side. This here is going to be well disposed to deal with you know our ever-increasing population center, uh, and then this area here can sprawl out as needed. So let's see what's missing. We're going to be missing... Ah, okay. See, I jumped the gun there. We're going to need to do some... Uh, Clay production, and uh, what's the nearest one? Looks like over here there's a lot of mineral ore, and it looks like the nearest ones are going to be up here, which is going to be a little bit of a pain. Let's go ahead and build that clay deposit. Oh man, <laughs> that's going to be a, a little while away. So they want me to produce a brick factory, so I think the way you would do this is go ahead and produce a brick factory over in this area so we can do that we'll upgrade you so basically they are going to be producing clay the clay then comes in here and let's go ahead and check the production so that's every minute this is every 30 seconds so it's going to be a little unbalanced there uh, so we'll probably want another one And we're going to wait for our wood to, to chip up a little bit more. But once that's done, then it'll be balanced out. So this is a good example of what I mean by if this takes 30 seconds and this takes a minute, well, then you're going to need a little bit more to, to help yourself out. And while that's going, what I could probably do is start to set up a... Uh, let's, let's say that we want to always hover around 20 and we can, uh, we can update that later. Take the stuff without a yeah, yeah, yeah. So they need a warehouse to drop that stuff off, and that'll allow them to then connect uh, back to everything. Oops, let's put that back. That's uh, so where's my warehouse at? That'll be a good little industrial hub. Aha! So what do we have here? So sometimes there'll be little resident quests, which I think are funny. You can make better what's already gold. Find and collect the farmer's pig. So I think this is, it's really funny. There's these little quests that pop up and you just have to go around your mini map and kind of uh, try and interact with things. Uh, so let's, okay, there's a pig. And then you kind of click on them. So I, I always love these quests. Uh, it's, it's kind of 
random and stupid, but for me, it's it's fun. It makes you interact with your population. It has little stories uh, and stuff like that. So there you go. Happy times. Okay, now that that's done, uh, we can go ahead and I believe, yeah, we should be able to upgrade that. So great. Now they have a place. Oh my god, the needs and the demands of my population grow and grow and grow. Looks like we're going to probably have to have a little bit more wood here soon. Hide the bottle. It's the boss. How much uh, workforce do they need? Uh, but uh, yeah, that's basically how it goes. And then what you would do is probably, you know, you would start to connect this out. And eventually, that's going to be a good way to do this. And... Uh, yeah, let's have that. And probably along the way, what we might end up doing is having, like, a whole bunch of forestry take place here, and then we can slowly relocate these and push them out as the population is underway. I can show you maybe a couple more things, uh, just as we're, uh, we're exploring. That pub is pretty large. Pub next to the fireplace, nothing, uh, firehouse, nothing could go wrong there. There we go. An awesome place for your citizens to come drink and be happy. <laughs> and uh, there's all kinds of additional things here. So, for instance, you can even have, like, uh, ornamental things that actually help with kind of your general population happiness and how, um, uh, like, the uh, the reputation of your city is. Uh, and that can then help you overall. So there's all kinds of stuff. And as well as just, you know, it being, like, like aesthetically ple pleasing, you can decorate this. Plus, there's all kinds of stuff in the form of DLC that allows you to make uh, different special ornaments. And uh, so, yeah, that's basically how this game works. You would continue to just build up, like I said, the base, which is going to be your farmer, slowly tech up. And then eventually the city is going to be sprawling. You would spread out to conquer and take over your entire island. And then over time, you could then, you know, spread that conquest uh, out abroad by trading with your neighbors, by buying out stake in their island, or by building a navy and fighting them. So, so much to be done in this game, and I, like I said, have really enjoyed it, and it's uh, not too bad for a first-time experience. Really, really like it, I hope you do as well. So if you like what you saw, definitely go ahead and check out Anno1800. You can try it for free from now until December 18th, or if you want to purchase it outright, they actually have a limited sale right now going on for 55% off, so definitely check that out and look in the description for more details on this offer. And yeah, see you in the next one. Peace out.